could we see a Haley comment? Because plenty of people think that Nikki Haley, if, and I know it's a massive, massive if, that she managed to become the person up against Joe Biden, that she would win hands down. She'd win hands down. There's not a question about that. Americans want any sensible, competent, middle-of-the-road alternate to Joe Biden. It's unlikely she'd be the Republican candidate if Trump is still standing. We'll, we'll have a better idea of Nikki Haley standing within the Republican Party in two weeks' time when you have the first of the primaries leading to the July convention for the Republicans when they choose their candidate. It's the Iowa caucuses. Um, she's coming in second behind Trump. Trump seems to have 44% of the vote in Iowa. Nikki Haley has about 25% and Ron DeSantis is behind at about 20%. Mm. So Trump has a lead, but Nikki Haley's hoping for some momentum to come out of Iowa with a good showing. Could we see a Haley comet? You can see you can see the headlines now if it happens. And it's a long time. We're talking, we're at the tail end of December here and uh, the real action happens in November next year. So it's, a, it's nearly a full year, so we'll watch with interest. Now, back home, the Albanese government finished 2023 in a much worse political position than it started the year. Um, that's a bit of a tradition that governments can sort of dip towards the end of the year. What do you think of the Albanese government for 2024? The gloss has come off it politically. There's no doubt about it. It was in a stellar, uh, impregnable position at the beginning of 2023. It's finishing 2023 level pegging with the Dutton opposition marginally ahead, uh, would probably form government if an election was held today, but a minority government. Now, a lot of that is because cost of living um, has has uh, dented their political mm. fortunes. Albanese was not seen to be empathetic enough or doing enough. He was too distracted by the yet, uh, by the, refer uh, the voice referendum. Uh, he didn't prosecute that well. And then there were some colossal blunders by ministers that just dragged on unnecessarily. The decision not to give Qatar extra flights, uh, the, the release into the community mm. of 120 potentially dangerous detainees. All of those issues weren't politically managed by so Albanese. He's, he's tied very much, we were discussing this off air, he's, dis he's dis tied very much to what happens economically, isn't he? I couldn't agree more. And for the government, they're not panicking. They regard this as midterm blues. Next year, they're counting on a budget being in surplus because of the increased royalties for our mineral exports, as well as increased uh, corporate and personal tax rates. They're relying on a reduction in interest rates. If, if, if the government gets both, then the, sh the ship will be steady. But it's a big if. We're done for time, but it'd be nice to have a more peaceful 2024, wouldn't it? Yes, and we're not going to, Tim. As you mm. know, there's no end to the Gaza war, tragically. In mm. fact, there's a th there's a, a real possibility it will enlarge into a wider uh, regional conflict, particularly if Hezbollah uh, steps up its attacks into, into Israel from the north. It's already, on mm. a daily basis, shelling uh, Israel. And as you know, there's... Yemen in the Red Sea and the like. Ukraine is a stalemate mm. um, and it's a bloody stalemate. No, it's a dismal picture worldwide. Yeah, not all that good, but we must, uh, we must pick the edges of joy where we possibly can. Have a very happy New Year. Thanks, Tim. OK, thank you, Peter.